Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome. I call this uh, meeting to order for the regular meeting of council for October the 4th, 2023. Result of the agenda for the October 4th, 2023 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councilor Boychuk, second by Councilor Medwood. All in favor? It's carried. Uh, Councilor Bobbick is still away. And we have CFO Begita by video tonight. Result of the minutes of the September the 19th, 2023 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councilor Powell, seconded by Councilor uh, Boychuk. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Four, 4.1. Result of council suspend this regular meeting and uh, an open appeal hearing number one, 2023. Moved by Councilor Powell, seconded by uh, Deputy Mayor Morio. All in favor? It's carried. So I call this uh, appeal hearing to order uh, one, 2023. The purpose of the hearing is to accept representation for the appeal 1 2023 in accordance with the unsightly bylaw 6 2018 and its application to 117 Crescent Drive. The committee requests that the appellate making representation to the hearing approach the committee and you will have a maximum of 10 minutes to speak. Go ahead. Okay, that's me. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, I guess. Uh, I have the, um, introduce yourself. Oh, it's Berman Danishek. I'm representing the, the owner of the property, 117 Crescent. There was a fire at the beginning of May, and uh, now we have an order to demolish yes. that was po posted on there. And uh, I just feel the, the fire chief's, uh, I got a letter June 19th, six weeks after the fire, and he's already ordering me to demolish the house. And uh, these things take time. Uh, his time frame is unrealistic and unattainable. Uh, dealing with insurance and, and uh, building inspectors, these things take time to come together to uh, come up with a plan. And I do have a plan. Uh, the building inspector was there and uh, he asked if we could have a month. The, 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 he, he was there and uh, a building, um, uh, the engineer has a report and it's going to be coming, but the time frame is just so narrow. It's just the fire chief is not a, it's not realistic. Is uh, I, I can't do it in that time frame that uh, he asked. Okay. Anything further? You're still on. If you have anything else. <clears throat> Do you have any questions? Uh, I guess if council does, go ahead. Council what would you consider a reasonable amount of time, Mr. Demichuk? That I need? Yeah. Well, I, I, I talked to Edifice and they were there last week and, and he inspected it, uh, uh, the 117, and actually I had him lined up for, for 325, the other house that burnt as well. But uh, there was a miscommunication between the, the building inspector uh, and myself. Uh, I was in here at the beginning of June, and uh, we had a, a time frame for the for the house 325. So just keep it on the 117. Yeah, well, they're, they're all connected here. though. I know, but we're talking about 117. Yeah. Right now. So so. Uh, so that's why I didn't get a, a building permit. I was held up six weeks by the miscommunication from the. The, the building inspector here that I was waiting on another place. And when I came back, I, I phoned him, I said, what's the scoop? He says, I'm, I'm waiting for information uh, uh, on, on uh, 346 that burnt. I says, uh, I have to know how many joists you're gonna replace. And I says, you waited six weeks to, to find out I needed, you needed to know how many joists like on, cause I had a building, uh, 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 an engineer's report for 346 that burnt. So I went there, I counted out, 11 joists, so I, I waited six weeks for him to, 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 to get 10 minutes of information. I, I, I came there, I, I uh, filled out, uh, he finished building out the, the, the building uh, permit for that place, which I got, but then I said, well, how about 325? And then 
it was already past the deadline for 325. I, I wanted to fix that one, but I, I gave it up. Okay, so I won't fix it. Uh, um, then I wanted to demolish it myself, and then there was a time frame as well that, that kind of vanished in front of me because of the miscommunication between the, 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 the fire chief, the CEO, and the building inspector. I was in his office. I had full intentions of getting a, a permit for the other place as well, figuring that he's going to communicate with the other departments and say, okay, you know, lay off with, with the, the other place there that we're, we're, we're dealing uh, with 325. There's uh, uh, June 30th was the deadline. So I figure, okay, I'm in his office at the beginning of June to get the building permit for, for 340, 346. I got that. Uh, then for 325, it was like, well, let's just deal with this one first. Uh, then we'll deal with 325. Thinking, well, this is the beginning of June, and it's June 30th is the deadline. I figure, okay, well, the building inspector is obviously going to talk to the CEO and the fire chief and say, okay, hold off with the demolition for 325 because Irwin's looking, he's looking to get a building inspect uh, a permit. So then when I came back, well, I phoned him on June, July 24th. I said, well, what's the scoop with the permit? And, and he says, oh, I'm still waiting on, on this information. And it's just like, I lost six weeks. And that's, way, that, that's why it's, everything got pushed back from all these deadlines that I had that I thought each department was communicating with themselves and, and they weren't. And, and that's why it's like, well, I got pushed into this little time frame now. And it's just like, well, weren't you aware that I was trying to get a report? You know, I was here and it's just like, no, no, didn't know nothing. And it's like, well, this is why, this is how I ended up with uh, this uh, tangled web of weeds here that, uh, that um, how the time frame became, came to, to missing all these deadlines that I supposedly had. I don't believe you answered the question, but how much time do you think you need? For, for the engineer's report? Well, one, for, one for month. The, for the, you said you need more time. Yeah, one people. month. I phoned Edifice. They were there. They looked at it. And they said, we, we have it drafted up, he says. But ask for a month. He says, that'd be plenty. But even, even it happened uh, June 30th. And, and I already get a letter from the fire department on June 19th. Like, where does he get a fire, uh, uh, an engineer's report so fast that he determined at a total loss that he already wants me to demolish it. It's like, whoa, man, it's like, I have an engineer's report gonna contradict his engineer's report that it's a total loss. I says like, so, so it's a slow down here. It's like he's pushing things like way too fast. So the fire is on June the 16th. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Well, that was one fire. Okay, Deputy Mayor Morio. There was two fires. Yeah, we're talking about 117 though. Yeah, okay. there was two fires there. Okay. There's two fires yeah. at that location. So, uh, so what is your intentions to do with that property? 117? Yes, that's the only one we're talking yeah. about. Yeah, it's going to be fixed. Okay. That's, that's... So, I'm looking at all these, these photos of the fire that was taken in June. And in your opinion, you're stating uh, for the record that this building is fixable? Yeah, well, they're going to have an engineer's report saying that, yeah. I think maybe the, 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 okay. the June 16th, that might have been the shed, because that, the, the other fire was in the beginning of May, but, or the end of April, whichever, but. Okay, uh, and then um, I guess, um, the notifications that you're getting for, for demolish, it, it is due to the, our, our bylaw and it's in, in um, an unsafe structure currently. So that's why. Which one, 117? Yes, that's the one we're talking about. Uh, that's, that's, okay. why, that's why the order of, of demolishes is because it's an unsightly, unsafe structure. So what does that mean? Layman's terms, it's ugly. It's ready to fall down, it's burnt. Like what, what like you're, you're coming here saying I'm going to fix it. Um, yeah, but he, that, the, same, the same generic letter went out for 346 and 325. It says unsightly, and I look at it, it's like, well, what can I do to make it more sightly? There's a house across the street that's all boarded up, looks the same. It's like... Any further questions? 
Councilman Edward. Do you have uh, anything in writing from the engineer you're working with to confirm that he is in need of X amount of time in order to do a complete uh, assessment and or report? No, I was, I was talking to him uh, last week and I asked him how much time. I says, I have to appeal it because I ran out of time because of the other two properties that I had that we ran into an issue with, with time, so. Is that something that you can get put into writing to be provided to council? The confirmation that you have hired an engineering company and that they themselves in writing are saying they need X amount of time in order to properly do an assessment and evaluation of the property as to its suitability for either rebuilding and or tearing down? I probably could. I don't see why they wouldn't. I, I just, they just verbally said ask for a month, even though it's going to be a lot sooner than that. So. And how soon would you be able to provide that to council and administration? Just to say that they're working on it. To say that one, you co contracted an engineering company and how long they need in order to put oh, yeah. together a final report or evaluation on this. Yeah, property. well, I could call them tomorrow and ask. Okay, so you could have that to council essentially by the end of the week or early next week? Sure, I don't see why not. You haven't called the engineer already since last, since when you when you appealed? No, I spoke three times to him already. They okay. said it's coming, yeah. And he didn't say what? Well, because they, they actually had an, engi an engineer's report for that other house at 325. No, regarding 117, we yeah. had a discussion that you, you told me when you appealed that you were going to talk to the engineer and get a report for this, and it was going to be for this meeting. Did he tell you when he could get it? Yeah, yeah, what do you call it? Uh, well, that's what it says, he's, he's working on it. I have, to call, I have to stop him from doing the other report, because this is, we're going to demolish it now, but this one there, he says, well, it's just about ready. He says, if you ask for a month, he says it'll be more than sufficient, but I'm going to take it just a few weeks. I was talking to the secretary that she was... So has the engineer actually seen the structure, been in the structure? Both of them, yeah. And they deem that it's salvageable? <laughs> well, <laughs> we're going to find out. So when were they in the structure? Uh, two weeks ago. And the fire was June 16th? Yeah. I, I contacted them June, uh, July 24th when uh, the when I needed a building permit for the other place. And, and that was in the middle of summer, so it took like, try to get an engineer in the middle of summer. It's like, well, this is the soonest that uh, he came out. Okay, well the time for the hearing has expired. Um, council, have any further discussion at all uh, before we call it a close? Council will discuss this and, 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 and have a decision for you and, and report back to you. Administration will get back to you. Anything further? Oh, yeah, okay, one more question. One okay. more. Yeah, well now, um, this order to demolish was put on uh, 117 Crescent and um, Three days before that, uh, I got a call from the um, town uh, bylaw officer at uh, eight o'clock at night. He says, Erwin, uh, someone broke into your house, the one that burnt 117 Crescent. So I went there, sure enough, the, the, the door was ripped right off the sheathing. So I put it in there, I screwed it back on. Five days later, I go there and uh, the sheathing's all ripped off again, it's thrown on the side and I got this was nailed to the door. So I phoned the RCMP and I uh, complained uh, or made a report of a, a break and enter. And I said, it might have something to do with this order to demolish. So he, uh, who, who gave the letter, I said, the fire chief, he did his investigation and he phones me back and he says, yeah, he says the, the fire chief was there doing fire chief work and they forgot to put the door back on. I said, really? Yeah, so anyway, this other letter that I got stating that uh, it's my responsibility to make sure the place is secure, that uh, the board it all up and whatever in the letter. So I find it odd that he would tell me to make sure the place is boarded up, but then he goes there to do his fire chief work and he forgets to put the door back on. So I thought that would just kind of 
Tyler's who was not the fire chief. He was there uh, inspecting, but Pynchon uh, did show up for a asbestos inventory, and Pynchon, our third party contractor, didn't leave the door open. Okay, and that's noted. Okay, well, thank you. Oh, good. Well, thank you very much. I uh, appreciate it. Was the fire chief there when they did their work, though, with uh, asbestos? Uh, you know what, I'm not sure of the exact times when he was there, but he was not there when they left. I see. Okay, well, that's, uh, I'm glad I had this opportunity to, to, to tell my story. And uh, like, like I said, the, the CEO, the fire chief, and uh, the building inspector, there's a lack of communication. I had full intentions of fixing up the other place, fixing up this place. I had engineers reports all lined up, but the, the communication between the departments kind of pushed us into this time frame where, you know what, that place is gonna be demolished. This one, I would like to fix it, but I feel the time frames were just unattainable, unrealistic. You, when you have a fire, you, you, you have to wait for insurance and, and uh, building inspectors or engineers board. That takes time, and I wasn't given enough time. That's just ridiculous. So I'm just gonna leave it with that, okay. that uh, the time frame is unacceptable. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. There's all the appeal hearing number one, 2023, be closed, and the October 4th regular meeting of council resume. Moved by Councillor Powell, second by Councillor Midwood. All in favor? It's carried. So the hearing is now closed. So council has to have a determination within five so days. So moving on. Sure. Okay. That's great. Uh, thank you. Appreciate it. Six. Uh, six six point one resolve the letter dated September the fifteenth, two thousand twenty three from the Association of Community Community Living be received by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Six point two resolve that sorry. Did I miss yeah. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna uh, mention something about the the candy and the wrappers and all that. We've had some complaints uh, with people saying that they cannot hear us when it's on the Zoom call. Uh, on the other side, it's it, it's the sound is actually quite magnified. So I think if council can refrain from some of the wrappers and candies or eating whatever during the meeting probably would be good unless of course you get a haul or something maybe excuse yourself but just in respect to those that are, are watching the video result of building permits uh, 53 23 through 55 23 with a total estimated value of eighty six thousand dollars be received moved by councilor white seconded by deputy mayor morio discussion on Go ahead. What's the replace signs uh, at 113 4th Ave North? I guess it had to be the SO signs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, look at business. Because okay. they need to take a permit for that. Probably the free standing based on the cost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 6.3, resolved that the letter from the Manitoba Municipal Relations dated September the 29th, 2023, regarding the 2023 Municipal Operating Grant and the final payment to be received. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? So you can see there that that's the final payment of 205-513 and Oh, sorry, yeah, and 41 cents. Moved by, oh, sorry, further discussion. All in favor? It's carried. Reports, uh, 7.1, uh, Director of Public Works report, uh, result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? Anything there, uh, Mr. Harvey? Uh, just getting ready to uh, switch over in winter, finishing up our last few summer projects. Okay. All in favor? It's carried. 
7.2, uh, Director of Recreation Report. Do I have a resolution here for that? No. Uh, Director of Recreation. We have the report there. Any comments on that? Any questions from Council? Okay. I'm just kind of looking through it, but so far it looks good. Okay. All right, then moving on to 7.3, Council Reports. Council Boychuk. Um, you know, I, uh, I, we had uh, the G8 meeting on Monday, which I thought was really good. And uh, I had a meeting with the Swan Valley Planning District today, ran over there and did some stuff with them. And upcoming meeting coming up with them and the fire board, as well as the Chamber of Commerce meeting. Yeah, and that's everything. Okay. Council Medwood. Um, well, I was in attendance for the G8 meeting, and actually, uh, Councilor Beerman, or Reeve Beerman, actually, brought forward, uh, I thought of it after the fact, but uh, his suggestion of us getting together on um, the four municipalities to look at sharing costs of funding with regards to landfill and waste management and a new approach. And I was just thinking that we are getting close to AMMs and maybe we can bring forward into our next CAL meeting prior to your end of month meeting with the um, heads of council. What we wish to set as our targets for approaching uh, provincial government while we're at the AMMs because I know under uh, protective services, I'd like to see us maybe put move something forward with regards to the CSWB, see where we're gonna be at, and with a new change in government, maybe we can also see about if there will be more funding. I know we've already identified in our community gaps for shelters and addictions, treatments, things like that, and that's part of their platform, so maybe we can obtain more funding towards our end uh, CSWB plan for those those things as well as uh, follow up with RCMP's uh, pay and all that kind of stuff that we've done in the past and for the transportation environmental health services that uh, waste management uh, recycling see what their government's looking to do if they're going to change anything with regards to the recycling programs and then under the utilities water and wastewater lagoon and maybe see if we want to bring that forward to the province too, see if there's going to be any supports, grants, funding to, because uh, that's a big ticket item that we need to be looking into in the near future. Okay. But yeah, if we can maybe bring that forward to a cow and uh, give our administration direction on how to prepare our uh, well, asking we, points. We will definitely yeah. have a working session on that for sure before the AMM. Perfect. Anything further? Uh, no, I think that's everything. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor White. We're relatively busy on, on the 20th we have the Urban Forest Committee meet and uh, one of the things they want to do is to do an inventory on the trees we have in our community and I think they're starting to really blossom out and I think they'll be a wonderful addition. I mean, they are a wonderful addition. We're planning our spring activities. We're doing something hypothetically with the school on a Maple Leaf Day. And it was uh, rewarding to me to see Louisiana Pacific, the Spruce Products Lumber, and the town all involved in that committee, plus volunteers within the community, of course, trying to uh, better our community. Then on the 22nd, uh, Councilor Mori and I went to uh, Steinbach, and that evening, starting roughly around 5, 6, we, we uh, probably had most, the majority of the 140 resident 1 and resident 2 docks come through. We signed, uh, signed is the right word, 16 of those doctors, I think about half and half of R ones and R twos, uh, said they would love to come to Swan River, and I want to compliment uh, Reeve uh, Gade for, for the uh, promotional packages that he had developed for them. So uh, all in all, I think it was really rewarding. If we get one or two, we'll be ecstatic. But certainly, our, our community was well known by the docs who came through. 
relative to our, our doctor recruiting, which is now medical professional recruiting. And uh, a couple of guys from Doctors Manitoba actually talked to us said, I don't know what you guys are doing up there, but you're doing it well. And the worst thing you can do is take your foot off the pedal. Now the time to pick it up and speed it up a little. So uh, it was uh, it was quite important to me. I, I should suggest to you that uh, one of the things we're promoting, uh, of course, monetary issues is promoting the Valley lifestyle, the, our school system specifically, our recreational facilities specifically, where we can get, provide a lifestyle to the docs as well. Of course, we have the clinic and the CT scan. I can also tell you as a byproduct of uh, medical services team. I was advised today that eight people have signed up for the healthcare aid course. Uh, a month ago when they offered it, nobody signed up. Zero, they had zero sign. Then we got involved, uh, Councillor Morgan and myself, and, and Councillor Gade and, and Councillor Reeve uh, Bierman. And uh, as of today, they have, it appears they have eight signed up, which is awesome. And on the 26th, we had a cow meeting, which we all attended. October the 2nd, we had our uh, G4, and uh, I was really pleased to see the school division there looking at methods so we can work in collaboration, the town, the town council, and other entities in the town as a whole. So I was pleased with their promotion, and the healthcare, uh, the healthcare discussion went, went really well. Uh, personally, uh, one thing I I was disappointed our First Nation partners and friends weren't there, and I have no clue as to why that is. And uh, somehow we have to send a some medium that where we can connect with SAP and with Specific our two closest partners, say, hey guys, we would love you to be there. We've talked around this for a long time, we're going to go out, we're going to go out. I'm going to really get a, a little more aggressive. I'd, I'd like to see a date chosen, and we're going to SAP, and we're going to Whiskey, we'll take out dinner if we have to, whatever it is, just to break bread, share some tobacco, whatever is most appropriate. So we have to do a better job of uh, communicating with our First Nation people. That's it, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Morio. Um, nothing really that hasn't been reported already. Um, September 22nd, as Councilor White uh, mentioned, I was on in Steinbeck on the medical uh, resident recruitment trip there. And the 26th of September, uh, Councilor Medved, uh, CEO Poole, uh, we had the one-on-one -on -one meeting with uh, CSW um, PIA project um, with the, with the consultants there um, moving forward with that project, and then on this October second, the G eight uh, G four uh, meeting in Bridge River. Councillor Polly. Yeah, I think everybody's mentioned everything we've been to. I went to the G four. Um, we had the cow meeting. We all went to. Um, we also we also had a library meeting on the twenty fifth. And, um, yeah, I think everything pretty much put out there. Okay. Uh, for me, I guess, uh, going back to the G4, G8, um, one thing that I, you know, we start to recognize is um, how we, the conversation of working together, and, it, and it's really starting to, you know, kind of take off, and I, and I think that we're in a good place right now. Uh, where we're really starting to work together. Fire Department is one good example. Thunder Hill Ski Club uh, is another part, you know, uh, partnership, I guess we can say, uh, for help from the municipalities. Uh, that's something that we still have to discuss, by the way. And, uh, and, and you know, doctor recruitment or medical recruitment uh, is, is a big one. So, and, and we also kind of launched kind of the starting conversation of the GIS unit uh, for the Swan Valley. So. Uh, that seed has been planted and, and like I mentioned uh, that evening that uh, the Reeves and I will be having a discussion about that uh, at the end of October. And that's it for me. Uh, CO report. You have a report there. Uh, maybe you can start open that up and then if the counselors have any questions. Yeah, just for uh, council's information, our phone system is down. I believe we sent out an email, so people still can contact us. We just have no automated voicemail, uh, or the auto attendant is also not working. So we're we're trying to solve it, but we are also looking at uh, replacing if we have to. <coughs> uh, and I do apologize to Director Close, and I believe I spelled her name wrong. Uh, and we are drafting our community surveys, preparing for 
community input on the bylaws that we're reviewing. And uh, just for Councillor White's info, we have contacted SAP and we're in communication with them and they suggested that we meet during the signing of our municipal service agreement, which is not ready yet. Right. And on, on that note, I was actually speaking with Chief Janai today and, and he said that uh, he's looking forward to that, but that's what we're kind of waiting for, so we will get there. Okay, any questions? Go ahead, Councillor White. Where are we with the uh, litigation? Are, are you getting optimistic? Is it near the end? No, no. Relative to the pool? Uh, that would be a camera discussion. Okay. Thank you. All right, so then we'll move on to 8, 8.1. Result of the 100 block of Centennial Drive North be paved in 2024 with a funding with funding from the Utility Reserve and grant funding from the MEDIP program. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by uh, Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion? Go ahead, Mr. Harvey. Uh, so typically we don't have resolutions for paving a road that we've dug up to do uh, utility that we just do that the next year. Uh, but I have this resolution because <clears throat> I want to apply for grant funding from the MEDIP program and we need a resolution for that application, so that's why this resolution is coming forward. Okay, thank you. Uh, for the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. 8.2. Resolve the council confirm the order of the designated officer in regard to the appeal hearing 1 2023 in accordance with bylaw number 6 2018. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councilor Medwood. Discussion. Uh, Councilor Medwood. I'm not sure I have a clear understanding of the resolution. Okay. Oh, sorry. According to the bylaw, Council has three options that we respond to the appellant within five days so that we uh, confirm the order because this is an order to demolish. So we confirm it and the demolish from the town, we enter the property and, and demolish the dwellings. You can confirm the order with conditions or any amendments that you choose, or you can set aside the order, which means it stops and it stays as is. <clears throat> we need a determination within five days according to our bylaw. Right. So we will not have a meeting. Well, if we don't choose tonight, we'll have to have a special meeting in order to make that required. Okay. For the discussion, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Um, yeah. So, with all due respect to uh, Mr. Dennis Chuck, uh, I I feel for him, but unfortunately, like this original fire occurred in June. Um, that's ample time. Like people can get their affairs done within two weeks. It's been done. I've seen it done. Um, there was not only one fire in that property, there was a second fire. Um, it clearly falls under the unsightly, unsafe property bylaw that we do have. Uh, it's an attraction to criminal activity in that location. Um, and as we're struggling with that, I, I see no choice for myself personally that we need to confirm this order. Um, he clearly has no concrete plan on how to refurbish, repair, fix that property to a, a habitable condition. Looking at the pictures out there, I don't see how, and it's just my my opinion looking at the pictures, I can't see an engineer even attempting to make that thing uh, feasible um, based on the value of that home uh, and the amount of repairs that would be required to bring that back up to a, uh, a habitable standard uh, under the public health uh, to put renters in there um, in a timely fashion and this community just can't sit there and have burnt homes throughout this community um, sitting there in various stages of securement uh, for months on end. Um, so I encourage and I support this uh, uh, resolution to uh, confirm the uh, 
demolition of this property. Okay, thank you for the discussion. Uh, go that go with CAO. Okay, go ahead. Just for information uh, to the to the regard to the statements in regard to the communication between administration. Uh, our administration discuss discusses all of these demolitions and repairs, the burnt houses in our managers' meetings. We were, we were very aware of the communications that we hadn't received from June till September 27th, which is three and a half months. There was no there was no intention to repair or demolish from the owner. Uh, the fire chief and myself were were very clear that the director of public works and the building inspector we're all aware of any communication with the owner and I believe we we have one string of emails in there for council to try and prove that but we uh, we were communicating. Thank you. Go ahead Councilor Medley. Um, the line of questioning I had it, I find it concerning that yeah between June and now there doesn't seem to appear to be any written communication I know when I experienced my fire not too long ago there was a regular email exchange between the insurance company, between any contractors that were involved in the repairs and the upkeep. So the fact that there's no written communication saying that he's obtained an engineer and that this engineer just hasn't fit this into their schedule is a bit concerning because everything's kind of happening verbally. So do you actually have an engineer? Are they a qualified engineer? It's kind of a late in the game, as I kind of agree with Deputy Mayor Morio, to now be kind of bringing that forward and saying, I'm working with an engineer, and just go on verbal and nothing to come today and kind of say, here's my proof, here's my uh, exchange and writing, this is where we're at. So, yeah. Okay. Councilor White. Unless I missed it, I asked them, I thought the billion dollar question. How much, how much time do you need before you get, and there was no answer that I heard. He said a month. A month? Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, 10, 10.1. Result of the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General Council checks number 30764 to number 30808, totaling $223,974.43 as listed on Schedule A. Payroll Council checks number 5366 to number 5368, totaling 10214 and 11 cents as listed on Schedule B. Payroll Council checks number 5369 to number 5373 totaling 116,332 and 44 cents as listed on Schedule C. Direct deposit payments totaling $795 as listed on Schedule D. And direct deposits payments totaling 10,410 and 69 cents as listed on Schedule E. Moved by Councilor Midwood, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion. Councillor Medwood. I just have one question. See if is on with us, because he's probably the one that can answer it. <laughs> uh, Director Harvey might know too. I'm just seeing the line for the uh, ferric sulfate for lagoon treatment. Where are we with regards to costs for those treatments in comparison to say last year? I'm just wondering how well our little uh, EMF 1000 or whatever is working. It's not relevant to this uh, resolution, but I'll let it go. Yeah, I'll uh, sum them up because we just finished our last uh, batch being put in. So I'll okay. do a little sum of what we did from last year and this year. I was just waiting until we had our last uh, discharge before getting those. Perfect, thank you. I'm looking forward to that. Councillor White. Look at two of those, three zero seven seven three, two hundred thirty nine dollars $239 for kitchen and grocery supplies. Surrounded. Okay. What do we buy for grocery supplies and kitchen supplies? Is that for here? What was the check number? Uh, 30773. It's part of the co op charging, probably. Kitchen and grocery supplies for town office. 
August I will have to pull that check to see the, the detailed items, but if I was to guess, there's paper plates and probably the refill of water, coffee, we provide. Two and three nine dollars is quite a bit, so I'll have to I'll get a detail of that. That's fine. You'll get that at your leisure. Uh, three zero eight zero six. If I can read my mind in money, for uh, I have a lot of empathy for a counselor. Uh, Medwood's comments relative to spending money on Amazon for a cabinet in Iraq. Now that doesn't sound like a special item that the town can't uh, supply. We, surely we've got racks and cabinets in town that could do the same job. I'm sure we do. I'd have to. I'd have to defer that to the fire chief. That's all I can answer. And uh, Muni site, five thousand bucks for website options. We're talking to some of these young people, some of them is wherever. It's at our website, uh, and I, I'm remiss to say I look at it very often. Do, we, do you guys look it over? Are you happy with the website? Does it look like it's going well? Because that's five grand to upgrade the website. I don't know. Uh, what check number? It's uh, 30781. What is your question? We spent $5,000 in that last check, I don't know how often that is, to update the website, to manage our websites. I'm wondering, are you guys happy with the website? Because you're the ones who deal with it every day, and if not, that's a lot of money. It, it is, I'm satisfied with it for what how we use it. It's, it's very easy to edit uh, ourselves, so we don't have to pay someone to do that. We do it in-house. Uh, I don't know, I, I guess the alternatives that we I, don't, I guess I'm, I'm not an expert in websites, and from what I've seen through third-party contractors, it is a lot better, and when there's an issue, it's fixed immediately. Okay. Uh, that is what I do like about it, um, is that I don't, I don't have to spend weeks constantly trying to get whatever's broken fixed. If you're happy, I'm happy. Councilor Medwood, and then Councilor Boychuk. Uh, in that line of discussion, uh, it, the line says it's for website annual hosting, maintenance, and support. So it doesn't actually say it's for upgrades. It just says it's for the hosting, maintenance, and support. Um, is this part of the all net stuff as well, or just the website itself? It is. All Night provides our, our website. We purchase it through them. So, But it is a separate cost from our meeting uh, service. Okay, so, so the, this price doesn't include the like the uh, meeting agenda and the being able to access files within all net that correct. we have. Okay, Councilor Borcha. Uh, it was kind of in line with that uh, Munisite as well. I was just wondering. It says maintenance and and such, and I know we had talked about some of the information on there being dated or, or needing correction and I know that one of the problems I thought was actually getting access to some of it like some of it was rise information and I can't remember it's in my other book I should have brought it but like do we have that on the radar to update and and clean that up if it's given to us so we don't actively go to the community organizations and make sure that they give us whatever they're doing to put it on our website. We say, if you give it to us, we will put it on our website. Because we're, all of the maintenance side isn't, they do not put things on the website. That's all us internally. So that has to be very clear here. Whatever's on the website is put on by us. This maintenance is, is typical, they, they own hundreds of websites for municipalities all over Canada, so. That's the that's the maintenance of all of those websites for Canada. Okay. And then I just had one more question okay, about ahead. the. I, it's so simple and, and nothing, but there's bottled water for the arena, and we have like a water filling station there. I'm just wondering, can we use that? Can we get the employees cups maybe, and they use the filling station? Like it should be filtered water. I, not that it's a big deal, it's only 738, but I'm like, there's a there's a bottle filler right there. Like we put it in, so that just I financially the, responsible, I see environmentally. The of, I see the director of recreation is nodding her head, so <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. it, it just something that caught my eye when we were yeah. looking through them. That's, that's, yeah. that's it. Okay, thank you. I concur completely, you know. Uh, 
look after the pennies or dollars, look after themselves. I caught it. Judy, my lovely wife, often buys bottled water. I just, water your chair. Is there a question there? Just, I, I just want to say that the assumption is there that it's for the employees. This, this could be for kids camp. I would, have, I would let the rec director look at what these water bottles are used for, and then we can get back to you. Yeah, and just a reminder. Let's just keep you know uh, the discussion uh, relevant to the uh, resolution. Further discussion. All in favor? It's carried. 10.2, whereas sections 326 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality may impose supplementary taxes and subsections 306 and 306.1 provide that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations from Manitoba Assessment Services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alterations provided by Manitoba Assessment Services on September the 25th and 29th, 2023 be made to the 2023 property and business tax rolls with the resulting increases totaling $1,396.89 and the resulting reductions totaling $2,391.49. Moved by <coughs> Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. All right, we move along all the way down. It looks like we have no camera items tonight, so we are um, going straight to that. Were you adding for his question that came earlier? It wasn't asked. Okay. Then no, I guess we don't. Okay. Okay, so uh, we'll end her off with uh, member's privilege, and I will start with Councilor Powell. Okay, um, no, uh, just a few things. Um, we had our National Re Reconciliation Walk this past weekend at the Friendship Centre. It turned out great. We had a, a close to 250 people attend. Um, and I think it was really, really a, a well, it was really well done. I think we had a lot of people that um, took in some knowledge and stuff. Um, yes, and we also, um, we also have the Community Foundations Dinner coming up. And that will be on November 17th. I think that's a huge event that we should all try to attend and everybody should um, be a part of. It's a, they're a great group that really support our community. So I think we should all, you know, if anybody can and has time, we should all take part in that. Um, uh, we have um, some, I guess we should make some congratulations like out to, um, you know, to Rick and to Andy, who both put their names forth, and, and um, th the way things went um, last night, we, we just congratulations for putting themselves out there for that. Um, and I think that's it for now. Okay, very good. Uh, Councilor White. Just two quick ones. So I'd, I'd like to thank uh, the Lions Clubs, uh, as many as were involved, for organizing the dinner the other night for the CT scan. And uh, that kind of uh, cooperation is, is so respected, and they have, a, I believe, a sizable amount of money that will come our way. Uh, the Swanville Outdoors Dinner, which we should all attend. The Eatsville Path, that's not true. The Swanville Outdoors Dinner is Saturday the 21st, and uh, I think they put 150000 plus into the community in the last three dinners, and the same numbers will come. And I want to thank Tanya and her team at the Albert Shark and Friendship Center for organizing the walk, which unfortunately I couldn't attend uh, last Saturday. 350 people, fantastic. Okay, does that have anything? Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor yeah. Medwood. Okay. Uh, I would just like to concur with Councilor Powell there. Uh, well, gratitude and thanks to both uh, Wochuk, Maxwell, and McKenna, mm -hmm. who ran to uh, represent our valley and our community on the provincial level. Congratulations to Rick for his uh, um, continuation as our leader. I was volunteering at the uh, CT scanner fundraiser dinner and it was a little disheartening to see the low numbers come out to support it. So, but I do believe there is a congregation that is stepping up to help uh, fill the gap for some of that community fundraising that's needed. So that was nice to hear. And I did attend in uh, the Friendship Center Truth and Reconciliation uh, walk. I did not have my appropriate orange shirt on that particular day because I was hoping to purchase one. My 
cousin who is First Nations Treaty from a Pasquayak Cree Nation won a um, t-shirt design contest in Ontario for Every Child Matters and I was hoping to purchase one of his t-shirts with his lovely artwork on it and it did not come to fruition by the time the walk came but uh, congratulations to my cousin for his win and his amazing uh, artwork on that. I'm sure you'll have your chance next year. I or will. any other time. <laughs> <clears throat> Councillor Boycha. Um, no, I think it sums it up what you guys have said. Congratulations to Rick and uh, thank you to the other candidates for going out there. Um, I think that's everyone else covered everything going on. Okay. Deputy Mayor Moria. Um, yeah, so uh, my thanks to the, the Valley Lions for CT scan project fundraising that they're doing. Um, every entity that does raise dollars for that project saves um, the medical recruitment fund some dollars so where that can funds can be redirected to other equipment or recruitment efforts uh, for the retention of physicians and professionals in the valley here. So, so thank you very much for that. Um, again, congratulations uh, to uh, MLA Wolchuk uh, for his win last night and to uh, Mr. Maxwell for putting his name forward in uh, running an election along with uh, uh, Mr. McKenna, I believe is his name. Um, I know that's not an easy task to put your name forward to run in, a, in an election, um, especially on a provincial level. I, we all know what it is on a community level, so it's, it's not an easy task. So um, thanks for doing that. Um, and then uh, as we move forward with a new provincial government, um, ourselves as a, a community government will be, I guess, feeling out that provincial government and the new ministers as to where they stand and how uh, cooperative they are. Um, and how they see and are receptive to our views. So um, I guess we're looking for, need to look forward to that and hopefully uh, with AMM coming up shortly in the next, uh, at the end of November, uh, we might be able to uh, meet some of these new ministers and uh, feel them out of how we're gonna be successful in moving forward with them in the next four years. So, and then on a final note, uh, Hopefully, uh, we're in the planning stages uh, for next week uh, for uh, the municipality of Swan Valley West and ourselves to have a signing uh, agreement signing event uh, for the new fire board agreement, uh, which will hopefully be planned uh, for next Thursday the 12th in the evening. So once we get those details confirmed and some uh, activities uh, firmed up, uh, invites will go out to dignitaries and community and firefighters and the media to join this momentous event for the rally. Well, that's all I got. There you go. I'm looking forward to that uh, next Thursday. But um, for myself, I'll let you go uh, after I'm done. Is that okay? Yeah. <clears throat> um, for myself, you know, uh, election last night and congratulations to uh, Premier-elect uh, Wab Kadu and uh, the MVP for forming government. Uh, like it was mentioned, we look forward to working with uh, the new government and ministers alike. Uh, as an AMM representative, you know, I do congratulate Rick uh, Wolchuk of uh, winning the seat and also on position for Willie Dauphin. Uh, I spoke with both of them and look forward to working with them as well for our part time region. Last week, I had the opportunity to travel to uh, Edmonton and attend the Alberta Municipalities Convention. Uh, with the AMM, and uh, it was quite an event, and uh, lots of uh, lots of learning there too. But it's very similar to ours, um, but uh, it's quite large too. At the same time, they have, a, and this is only the urban municipalities, not the rural municipalities. Uh, so uh, a lot of. Uh, I guess rubbing shoulders, meeting new people, and so forth. But the keynote speakers are absolutely amazing people, and I'll share that some other time with, with you all. But uh, you know, it was really good. And I like their themes, like they really focus on reconciliation, truth and reconciliation, and inclusion. And, and it didn't even mean just Indigenous inclusion, it meant also people with uh, visible disabilities and so forth. So I really like the, the whole theme that they went along with. So. 
and I say, oh, right, um, extra foods, you know, uh, we all know that that's uh, changing uh, tomorrow, uh, the official transition to no frills. Uh, their grand opening is tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Um, I look forward to being there in attendance and uh, Dylan and Galen are the new owners of the, of the new frills and I'm also lucky enough to have them as my new neighbors as well. So anyway, uh, get out there and check out No Frills tomorrow, their grand opening, and congratulate uh, the, the new young couple. And anything for you, uh, Mr. Uh, Poole? Uh, no? Okay. Oh, right, I forgot to go back to you, sorry. <laughs> I, I just wanted to say, I had a chance and an opportunity to go up to Thunder Hill this past weekend and take a walk up there, and honestly, if anybody gets a chance to go up there, you should. Because it, the facility, and it, it's an amazing. You would, it's not. It's something like you have, haven't seen before. They have put so much time, obviously money and effort into building this up to be a first class, first class. I, I don't know what you call it, um, resort type. Um, it was absolutely. It's an absolutely amazing and a huge, huge uh, congratulations to them and. Please, if anybody can take up, take the time to just go for a walk and see everything that they've done up there. It's not just the ski hill. No. Yeah, it's year round, so you're yeah. right. It's really a great place. Mm -hmm. You didn't have anything. I don't. I feel like I uh, should. Okay. I thought maybe you would too, but okay. <laughs> Mr. Harvey. Uh, yeah, I was up there. We did the loop a couple times actually. Uh, there was people that were jogging on it, about two kilometers. It's all. Uh, rolled out gravel, so compacted gravel, so it's an awesome surface to walk or bike on. And uh, yeah, I was at the walk and that uh, was awesome to see so many people out there. I didn't make it last year, so I was glad we made it this year. Absolutely. Director of Recreation, anything? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, CFO Garita. Nothing. Okay. I'll get this back on. All right, 17. Resolve this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 7.57 p.m. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Boychuk. All in favor? It's carried.